Hey guys, how you all doing today? A ting, a ting, a ting. And listen, man, Ireland is definitely on my bucket list. Definitely on my bucket list. Learn a little bit about uh, the, the politics that's going on there, and I'm going to keep learning about that. Learning about the history that's going on there. That's kind of cool. But another thing I'm going to do is watch videos that shows what it's like in Ireland. This one is called Top 10 Cities to Visit in Ireland. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to see the perspective of this one. I think I've watched one before, but, you know, let's see if there's different places that I could, you know, do. And and after I watch these places and I see something that I really like or want to be interested in, I'm going to react to that specific place too, you know, that specific town, that specific city, you know, some of us say a thing. And uh, I don't know. I've always been intrigued by Ireland. I guess it's because it's been purported that my grandfather has got Irish heritage in him. You know what I mean? But I've always been sort of uh, intrigued and uh, and interested in there. You know what I mean? And I have and it, it, it have nothing to do with the the, the 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 common thing about Ireland, like the leprechauns and the pot of gold and stuff. It have nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? It, it's just like there's just something about that place that makes me want to see what what goes on there, you know, or what it's all about, you know. Uh, same thing about Canada, you know, because Canada is like, oh, the friendliest people in the place. And I actually met, I'm going to leave that one for like, uh, a video that I react to Canada, but, you know. Uh, and I've met some Irish people here too, you know. There are people from Ireland here too. And they, they have this, uh, this uh, reputation of being rowdy people and stuff like that but then you know on the island they consider us rowdy too because when we do our our, our party you know what we call bacchanal back home and thing you know and, and of course there's some people of Irish descent on the island and thing and a lot of a lot of Irish people came through there when I was a kid so and they told me stories too because I used to just go up to tourists and talk to them not so that I could get stuff from them just I just wanted to hear about where they're from so I heard stories you know but you know I'm babbling here What's wrong with you, man? Let's get into this video, you know, man. 10 cities to visit in Ireland. Let's YouTube and Sim Simmer. The Republic of Ireland occupies most of the island of Ireland, off the coast of England and Wales. Its capital, Dublin, is the birthplace of writers like Oscar Wilde, and home of Guinness Beer. The 9th century Book of Kells and other illustrated manuscripts are on show in Dublin's Trinity College Library. Did that or no? The Emerald Isle for its lush landscape. The country is dotted with castles like medieval Care Castle. I you see, the Emerald Isles. I think that's one of the things that got me going, ooh. That's such an exotic way to uh, describe a place, the Emerald Isles. Let's get going. Ireland's rich culture, enchanting green landscapes, Ooh. and friendly locals are just a few reasons why so many travelers make the journey to this island country. But with so many cities, charming small towns, and countryside wonders to choose from, it may be hard to decide exactly what should be on your itinerary. Adventure, food and culture, plus expert opinions and traveler sentiment to determine the best places to visit in Ireland. My God. Whoa. Old churches. I love me some old churches. A lot of the churches there seem to look like churches back home, only they are a lot bigger. You know what I mean? They have their shell castles too. I mean, man. Wow. Is that pubs there? I'll do that. Ivy Cottage. Number 10. 
Sligo. Sligo? What you got this to pretty offer? pretty town is only a two and a half hour drive from Dublin. And what a drive it is. From the crashing Atlantic Ocean to the majestic mountains, sparkling lakes, and lush fields, there are plenty of natural wonders to gape at in this lovely spot. The town itself is charming. Stone bridges allow visitors to cross the river Garavo oh, while wow. keeping their toes dry. Quaint stores entice shoppers, while traditional Irish restaurants entice tourists to taste their wares. You know, I'll be honest with you. America's got some beautiful places. I, I, you know, people would think I don't like it here and stuff like that. I'm just a nomad, you know what I mean? And I've been in one spot for way too long, right? Though, so I'm getting restless and thing. But uh, I don't know. It's like where you are, you know, it's beautiful. But when you see other places, places that are pretty much hard to get to, it seems more exotic to you and it seems prettier. But I think what makes it more intriguing is that when you go there, they either speak a different language or they have a different uh, accent of English that they speak, you know, or they have different sports, the culture is different. So then that sort of impacts how you see the landscape to a certain degree. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And of course, too, I mean, with the traveling that I did, when you get there, it's not like you pictured it. The feeling is not like the feeling you, you you thought you'd feel. And I think that's what's so intriguing about traveling, you know what I mean? Because your anticipation usually isn't matched by when you're in the actual spot. You're the actual, like if you're in the rainforest, that's a whole different feeling. You thought you'd be scared because there's snakes and there's like, you know, bugs and possible, uh, uh, you know, uh, tropical diseases and stuff like that. But once you're there, it is so peaceful. Maybe that's how the wild animals get you because you relax. You're not you're not you're not on edge. But then again, that's for somebody who enjoy nature. Now I'm a, I'm a lot and it's sad to say, but you know, I'm a lot more conscious of myself when I'm around human beings than when I'm around you know, the, you know, the wild animal, you know, hey, don't go there. That will happen. With a human being, you're not supposed to feel that. You know what I mean? But uh and that's why I'm choosing places like where people are friendly, like Ireland and Romania and stuff like that. People are friendly there, especially out in the countryside. Because here, depending on where you go, like I spend a lot of time in uh, Eastern Kentucky where my ex-wife is from. And generally speaking, most people there are friendly. Of course, it didn't hurt that I'm seven feet, one inch tall, and basketball is a big thing there. So they were really friendly to me. But, you know, it's always good to go somewhere different and people are friendly there. And you don't have to question whether or not they're pretending. And I'll be kind of honest with you. I kind of feel that way where I am. If I go out somewhere, I'm very conscious of, the, of my surroundings because I, I just don't know what people are thinking. That's no way to travel, man. I want to just go travel and go, ah, hey, what's up, buddy? You got some of that, uh, you know, traditional food I man could gobble down and take, you know? Everywhere in the world you go, there are sheep just chilling in there. <laughs> wow, that's like a painting. Flowers. I was wondering when I see the colors in here. Number nine, Clifton. A small city, Clifton certainly packs in a ton of beauty. Oh, wow. Nestled quietly within the 12 Fence Mountains and beside the mouth of Clifton Bay, you'll be hard pressed to find a more breathtaking town. Tall church steeples are dwarfed by towering mountain peaks while colorful buildings pop against nature's lush green wow. backdrop. Stone walkways line the serene river Owen Glen, which runs through oh, the man, center look at of town. Church. It's lined by shops and restaurants and offers a perfect place to visit for a long walk, followed by a hearty meal. Amir I'll be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not one for a lot of man-made stuff, but if the stuff is old, 
and preserved for some reason. I'm intrigued by it and I think it's because it was less evasive than this sprawling city things that we have here with all the pollution and stuff going on. You know what I mean? It was so simplistic to us in these modern days. To them, that was a marvel of architecture and stuff like that. Uh, you know what I mean? And even though, like I said, I'm not a big fan of man-made stuff, those things built so many centuries ago, it's kind of like, well, it is our con connection to the past, but only if we could stand in there and close our eyes and feel that connection, you know what I mean? Near 50 miles from Galway, Clifton is a popular weekend retreat for those looking for a relaxing getaway. Those who crave a bit more excitement should head to the area's sandy beaches where they can swim in the refreshingly cold sea. Wow. Look at the reflection on that lake, boy. Is that a castle up there, too? There's like a lot of small castles all over the place there. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. Is that Ireland with those clear, clear ocean waters there? Number eight. Woo. I have Another never heard of these places. Of old world meets modern day. Tralee boasts historic Georgian homes interlaced with contemporary buildings and concrete piazzas. Perhaps best known for its annual Rose of Tralee International Festival, oh. Tralee is short on tourists at other times of the year, but big on charm. One of the most popular tourist destinations in Tralee is the Kerry County Museum, which includes life-size dioramas that bring life in the 20th century to the forefront of our modern-day culture. The Tralee Bay Wetland Center is another crowd-pleaser, filled with wildlife and scenic views. A lot of people would, wouldn't like all that uh, gray clothes and stuff, but like I said before, I love it. I think it's gorgeous. It's just another side of nature. That's all it is. Like it's kind of cloudy out there, and between me and you, I like this town better when it's cloudy than when it's sunshiny. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take a camera through this little city just to show you guys. Dingle. Dingle. Jutting into Dingle Bay. On the spectacular Dingle Peninsula is one of the quaintest fishing towns you'll ever come across. It features hilly, narrow lanes lined by gorky shops and farm-to-table restaurants. Dingle also boasts a picturesque lighthouse, a medieval stone tower dating back to 1847, Ooh. and brightly painted buildings favored by other charming cities oh, like this. Yeah. For a small all city, Dingle offers plenty of fun and interesting things to do. What this town is best known for, though, is its more natural surroundings. Tourists flock here to work in their new hiking boots on trails that snake through lush fields on the wild Atlantic Way. They want to explore secret wow, sand, a botanical and the sand between their toes on Cumnil Beach. I bet they cooked some mean fish over there, boy. I mean, I'm from an island. We cook some mean fish. But, you know, just their style of how they cook their fish would Number be nice. Six. Kinsale. If you like to eat, you'll love Kinsale. That just made me thirsty. Known as the and I don't even capital drink. of Ireland, this small city has a motto that gastronomes will truly appreciate. Every October, this tasty town highlights its delicious fare in the annual Kinsale Gourmet Festival. What? If you can't make it to this popular festivity, be sure to check out as many restaurants as you can during your stay. To work off that third helping, head to the impressive, star-shaped Charles Port, or take a walk around beautiful Kinsale Harbor, where you'll face boats that cost more than your house. In town, you'll be greeted by charming cottages painted in every color of the rainbow. But that's kind of cool, man, you know? Like, nobody paints the house up here. It's all pretty neutral colors, you know? It's, there's no reds and yellows and greens and stuff. Not a whole lot, you know? And a lot of people live in trailers here, too, you know what I mean? 
and all the houses all look alike. Number five, cork. Put a cork. There aren't many places that boast Whoa. a museum dedicated to butter, nor are there a lot of cities that welcome you as warmly as cork. The second largest city in the Republic of Ireland. Cork is arguably one of the most cosmopolitan. As a result, you'll find all types of gastronomic delights, as well as diverse art galleries, interesting shops, and unique museums. Now that's gorgeous. A revitalized waterfront, rejuvenated streets, and an influx of quirky eateries lend both charm and elegance to this once downtrodden metropolis. Man, whoa, no, that's gorgeous. At night, it must be beautiful there, boy, you know. Lots of rolling hills and things, too. Number four, Limerick. Deemed Ireland's first Irish city of culture, Limerick is a city with grit and a lot of newfound glitz. You'll find an updated waterfront and the bustling Newtown Perry Quarter, which boasts shops and restaurants able to compete with those in any booming metropolis. Considering this island city, which sits between the rivers Shannon and Abbey, spent much of its 1,100 year past under siege, wow. the revamp is particularly impressive. Blue skies the Grand too. Georgian buildings line streets peppered with eclectic art galleries oh. and museums. Them churches. Looks like an Anglican church on the island. I don't know what religion is that. I don't mean to offend nobody, but it does look like an Anglican church that's on the island. A bigger version of it, nonetheless, though. I love cities by the water. I love cities by water. I don't like to be landlocked completely. Number three, Belfast. There's a lot about Belfast. Northern Ireland's most famous gem, Belfast was once a place best avoided. Violent clashes between Catholics and Protestants marred the city's image and created segregated areas of town. It's impossible to ignore the city's remarkable redevelopment, which began wholeheartedly after the Good Friday Agreement, circa 1998. Areas such as the Cathedral Quarter and Victoria Square have been rejuvenated. The River Lagan has been cleaned up and its banks improved and revitalized. You'll also find plenty of restaurants to write home about, as well as an opera house, zoo, and botanic gardens. I love botanic gardens. We have those on the island. We have a couple of those. Man, those botanical gardens, boy. Woo! Whoa. Now that's gorgeous. Lots of great clothes. I'll enjoy that, please. Number two, Galway. I've heard of that place, too. Galway is teeming with life. Around every corner of this eclectic city lies music, art, or colorful buildings to immediately brighten your spirit. The city's bohemian vibe is unmistakable, and it lies in stark contrast to Galway's iconic elements such as the historic medieval town walls and striking stone bridges that cross the river court. When it comes to food, Galway is an up-and-coming gastronomic Woo! superstar. Surrounded by fertile fields and a vast ocean, oh, chefs yeah. have the freshest food at their fingertips, and they use it to create delectable dishes so tasty. Other top Galway tourist attractions include the Galway Market, St. Nicholas Church, and okay. Galway Cathedral. The, the cool part about these places is like a sea line, a sea show that's different. Totally different to what I am used to on the tropical island. You all ever get a chance to visit Grenada, visit Grenada. 
I know everybody likes to go to Jamaica and Bermuda. No, no, Grenada is the deal, all right? And not just because I'm from there, but it is the deal, you understand? Number one, Dublin. Ireland's capital should be the first stop on every traveler's list. Cobblestone streets abound, adding to the city's charm, but most visitors revel in Dublin's vast and storied history. Its museums are top-notch. The Colmanum Jail, for instance, offers a unique and intimate look at the country's struggle for independence. Ireland's largest metropolis, Dublin is also its most oh, diverse. Golden looking. This culminates nice shot. a phenomenal variety of culinary offerings and a vast and interesting music scene. Grafton Street is where you'll find the city's heart, as well as some of its best Street. restaurants and most eclectic shops. I'm enjoying this one. Oh man, I thoroughly enjoy that. Comment down below and tell me of other places that might be of interest to me there. You understand what I'm saying thing? But man, this is beautiful. Hold on just a second. I shall return. I shall return. I'm back. My only taste of Ireland. <laughs> I don't know how I came upon this, but I you know it's uh, well. You all know what it is. I don't know if, you, if this is popular there, but it, it's popular here. I got it at the grocery store worker, and uh, I was watching a food thing, and they said this is one of the best butters you could buy. And I'm telling you, it's like a taste of home. You know, I don't know if we have this brand of butter back home when I was there, but uh, I, I, I'm going to tell you all, man, a lot of people in this area where I am come to the line with that butter. They don't buy none of that other stuff there. They buy this one. You know what I mean? And it's funny because I didn't know about it. And then I saw I saw a video where somebody said that that's a good one to buy. And I went and I buy it. And all of a sudden, I see everybody coming through the line with it because it tastes good. You know what I mean? The thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd toss that one in there. Hey, I will leave a link to this video in the description so you all can check it out, the thing. And I'll also leave links here of uh, videos that uh, I've reacted to on Ireland. And like I said, comment down below. Give me some vibe, you know. Give me some vibe with me. So what's up? What's the dealio thing about Ireland, you know?